Um, welcome to the Meeting Interesting People. Today my guest is a professor of Tufts University of Music Department, John McDonald. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And um, um, we met with John a while ago um, on the lunch concert at uh, Tufts University, uh, which is where at the chapel during the lunchtime, of course, um, because it's called lunch concert. Um, it was organized by Joyce uh, Galantic, and uh, um, you were not the first guest we met there, I think, but it was uh, different um, musicians and composers, and then we heard you perform. I think there was the piece that you perform uh, with somebody as a accompanist, right? It wasn't your solo piece as far as I remember. Anyway, um, and just recently uh, I was at the concert at Longer Music School, um, the faculty artist recital Liz Anchor, um, and um, I was reading this uh, information of your bio here that uh, congratulations that you were recently promoted to professor of music at Tufts. Thanks. And I know this year is a very special year for you. You turn in 50. Yep. So, and uh, what I would like to show with our viewers uh, just uh, how you uh, can analyze those years of uh, being a composer and a pianist and a teacher at Tufts and um, I know that you graduate Yale and uh, the other story I read on your website which is your student comment that you keep your low profile because you can't get too much on your website about like how did you start and uh, I remember I was reading that the story which is I really uh, like it when you were six years old and you can continue and uh, it Gee, was I, I don't remember that story <laughs> No, but it was, it's like you were in a school or kindergarten? Yeah, I think this, this is a story that my mother tells, which is uh, I was in kindergarten and there was a piano in the classroom. So I uh, uh, told the teacher, I think it was the first day of kindergarten, uh -huh. and I told her, oh, I can play the piano. And I just went over there and improvised some crap, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and she said to my mother, well, it's not the worst I ever heard. Oh, ah, okay. So that's the story. Okay, so, well... It was showing kind of uh, some directions that you maybe will be a composer and a pianist, and you are a composer and a pianist. And I know that uh, the piece we uh, used as an introduction to the show, that one of the uh, most um, famous one right now, because it's won a, um, you can say that uh, the, pr uh, the award Oh, you're talking about the piece that we used yeah. to um, start the show. Right. This is a piece for a saxophone and piano right. that got a national award in 2007. It was uh, Music Teachers National Association Distinguished Composer of the Year. Yeah. And so. what that meant was that uh, this piece, uh, which I wrote for uh, someone we both know. Right, um, our Philippe mutual Sch friends. Philippe Steudling. Um, who teaches uh, saxophone at Tufts, wonderful musician. Um, and this was a, a piece that was a response to a song cycle by Schubert, which usually is done by a male voice and a pianist. Mm -hmm. But Philippe approached me several years ago and said, I'd really like to perform that cycle. Mm -hmm. He would be the singer, but he'd be playing, on the, playing the, the vocal part on the saxophone. So I thought, that's a fascinating idea. And so I wrote this piece as a, a preamble to um, a performance of the Schubert, which we eventually did uh, mm -hmm. just this year. Right. Uh, so the, the prize that it got was just sort of an accident. And, it, <laughs> and we recorded it in just, just the piece that I had written. And we had not yet done the whole project. Oh. Um, but my piece is a response to each of the four uh, of the 24 Schubert songs. Mm -hmm. um, I think he performed already, right? Those songs himself. Right. Okay. We did. We did the whole thing together. We did mm -hmm. my piece as a as a sort of beginning, mm -hmm. and then we did the whole Schubert. I piece. see. Makes a kind of long concert. It's about uh, 90 minutes of music. And I know it's very difficult for the performer. Well, it's an it's a bit of an endurance thing. Um, 
but we enjoyed doing it and uh, hopefully we'll do it some yeah, more. Yeah, you're actually working together for a while, right? Yes. Um, we met through Ken Radnovsky, mm -hmm. who was at one point uh, Philippe's teacher at, right. at Longy. Uh, at Longy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've known Ken for many, many years, and we comparatively lost touch in the, in the 90s, but then reconnected through a tough student, actually, mm -hmm. um, in the late 90s, and we've been working pretty closely together for more than 10 years. Good. So, so I now I want to just go back again for the beginning because I would like to uh, put our interview the way of the stages. So you uh, went to music school where and when first, or you te I was taking like uh, private lessons or how that went? Yeah, I, I started composing when I was 10, mm -hmm. um, kind of on my own. And then in at about middle school age, I encountered a, a, a composer who was also a cellist, and I was playing a little cello at the time. Hmm. Turns out I was a terrible cellist, but <laughs> I was really interested in um, what he had to offer in teaching me composition. So I had a cello teacher who wanted to teach me cello, and I wanted to study composition. Mm -hmm. So we'd have these five-minute composition lessons at the end of the cello lessons. Ah. So then, then that lasted a year or so, and mm -hmm. then I met uh, really my first mentor, who was William Appling. Mm -hmm. He was a pianist and choral conductor uh, who just died in uh, uh, last year, November of last year. And uh, I'm going to New York this week to participate in a celebration of his life. Um, so he was very influential. Um, but there was, uh, what period is that? That was high school. High school, um, okay. My entire time in high school. But wh wh where was the high school? That was in Northeast Ohio. Oh, I okay. went to a place called Western Reserve Academy, um, and that's where he was the director of music. Okay, so the, the high school was specializing on the music? Not particularly, but oh. he ran a wonderful music program there. I see. And uh, so it was extraordinary, actually. Hmm. And then from there I went to Yale. Yes. Um, I studied piano with Ward Deveni, mm -hmm. who, uh, whose daughter, Susan Deveni Weiner, mm -hmm. is a Medford resident. Oh. Uh, and she's married to Yehudi Weiner, um, Pulitzer Prize winning composer. Right, right, right. Also lives in, in Medford. Medford. Right. I read about well, it they're in the so in, in newspaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so I studied with her father mm -hmm. and uh, actually met Yehudi. Uh, in the late 70s when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, so I studied piano primarily as an undergraduate and part way through my undergraduate career made a kind of mental switch to mm -hmm. composition. I'd been composing the whole time, mm -hmm. um, but I, I wanted to make more of an effort to study composition. The, the composition is, was mostly for piano? Or it was for different instruments? I wrote w one of the it's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the primary comfort zone for me as a composer would be the solo piano piece mm -hmm. and the art song. Mm -hmm. uh, so from a very young age, I discovered I could sight read. And when other people discovered I could sight read, I started playing voice lessons. Mm. So I grew up doing that. Uh, I see. And so in high school, after school, I'd be playing for people's lessons, um, you know, a couple of hours a day. Mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful experience. And uh, it's still my favorite place to be, really, is uh, as a collaborative pianist. And so a lot of my compositional efforts, I mean, the saxophone piece right. included, right. Um, these are songs mm -hmm. which now are transferred to a saxophone and piano context. But for me, it's just like playing songs. Right. Well, I hope that Philip someday will be my guest here on my program too. And um, um, I, when I was writing about him uh, previously, uh, that I said he's actually not just a musician; he's an actor who's acting. And so it's like he's uh, his voice is showing through the saxophone, and yeah. that's what actually you um, just described. So, um, and um, after Yale, so what's next steps? Well, I kept, uh, I stayed at Yale. Uh, mm -hmm. I did my undergraduate degree and then all of my graduate work mm -hmm. there. 
And right. what was the graduate work? What kind of piece of music it was, the composing? Or? It was all composition. Okay. I, I took my, I, I had an undergraduate major in music, mm -hmm. and then I got a master's and a second master's in composition. Oh. The way the degree program works there is uh, for their Doctor of Musical Arts, you take a, a second year of master's work, mm -hmm. which prepares you for that. So um, basically, I left Yale in 1983 with my second master's. And mm -hmm. then the way it works is, is it's a kind of institutional apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I moved to Boston mm -hmm. and started my career here. And uh, then in again, like a composer or like a pianist? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got. I, I suppose they were initially separate things, but they've sort of become the same mm -hmm. breath for me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if that makes any sense. Right. Um, I'm ha half of each, or I, see. I am both. And uh, so in 1989, I got this Doctor of Musical Arts in Composition. Ah, um, okay. And, and so what composition it was for what instruments? That, that degree actually is not, doesn't include a thesis. So there wasn't mm -hmm. a specific piece that I got the degree for. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the final uh, year of residency, I did a, a couple of programs, of com complete programs of my own work, mm -hmm. uh, which at that point were largely um, piano sonatas and song cycles. Oh, OK. And uh, so um, I'm always fascinated when I'm coming to the concert where you perform, and I see these pieces <laughs> you put on the piano. <laughs> and, and I just try to figure out, then you um, accurately put one after another on the floor or something. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out um, why is it, and it's sometimes it's very small, right, you know, print. Uh, it's good that you have still a good vision if you can read that. Or uh, why is that type of, uh, setting on the grand piano? I like being able to have the whole piece in front of me as much as I can. Oh, okay. So I, I often reduce the scores um, so that I can get as much music just on one face mm -hmm. as I can. Um, sometimes it's not a good idea because ah. <laughs> I can't see it or um, you know it's better to have a page turner. But yeah, uh, yeah I, like, I like not having to um, rely on page turning if it's a brand new piece uh -huh. and we don't really know how it goes. It can be surprising for a page turner. Yeah, and so if you develop type of uh, appearance, it's always black. Is that a Oh, wearing black clothes? Yeah. Well, for me, my personal reason for doing that is that I don't have to wear a tie or get dressed up. <laughs> um, you know, if I just wear black, then it looks formal. And I think some of your students develop that kind of a <laughs> well, there's, it's, there's something we call new music black, ah, which okay. basically, you know, black clothes sort of de-emphasize the body, and so uh -huh. you, you listen to, to the music because everybody looks the same. Yeah, um, so I heard a lot of work written by your students, and um, it seems like they're very successful composers as well. So how many students uh, by now you already um, taught? Do you have a number? I uh, don't have a number in my head. Um, approximately. What, what I could say is that the master's program in composition mm -hmm. at Tufts, the way the Master of Arts works there is we have three sub-disciplines, musicology, ethnomusicology, and composition. Mm -hmm. Typically, I'll have six um, master's students in a given year. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so how many years you start uh, teaching? It's excuse like me? How many years you teaching at Tufts already? I've been there 19 years. Oh, 19. Uh, Whoa. I, I started part-time, and then gradually it's gotten yeah. more full. So and we, we uh, multiply 6 on 20, approximately? The, I didn't teach graduate students the first few years I was there. Ah, okay. There was n The program sort of had to mm -hmm. be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. So I started in 94, so let's say... 15 years times six students a year, what do mm -hmm. you got, um, you know? So we can watch the DVD students. right now where you...